Hello, hello, hello. My name is Wasco, and I'm here to show you my absolute class A hoarder let run that I do in Fallout 76 to get, I wouldn't say infinite let, but more than enough to craft way too many bullets that I can absolutely not carry. So all the locations and the amount is linked in the description below and of course you can browse through with the chapters to the information that you need. want to do all of the locations at once probably best to prepare a little bit. Naturally most of the serums will come in handy. In terms of perks the biggest ones that I recommend are the weight reductions. You can obviously carry more. Travel agent if you want to save a little bit on your bottle cap. And naturally any gear such as an yielding that decreases weight is always a good idea too. And then the last big one is of course the minor suit. If you want to get the big loads of lead those are the ones that you're going to need as they give you a lot more for every ore vein that you collect. If you want to go really berserk like I do I highly recommend the two leg upgrades that each give another plus 50 carry capacity meaning the minor suit will give you a total of 200 extra carry capacity. That's about all you need so let's go. So Palace of the Winding Path I don't use this location much anymore unless I need the yellow cow flowers and then I always go straight for the beeline for the lead first. There's like a mini gym locker room a little bit hidden away, but once you know the route, it should be very easy. Basically, straight beeline towards it, going inside. You have to kill a few scorch, but nothing, nothing too crazy. And then, if you follow the route that I'm showing here on the screen, you should be able to see the lead, the gym weights, laying ready. And then, if you want a crafting bench to scrap it down, make more inventory space, all you have to do is go down the stairs, go through the door, then go through the other door, and straight below you. There should be a chemistry workstation where you can, of course, smelt. And here I forgot to pick up the red poison, which gives you another 5 lead. So in total, it should be around 34 lead. Next location I go to is the sunny top ski lanes. I often come here just to, for leveling when I have a double XP boost, but there's a nice small amount of ledge you can catch if you go straight to the right and go to the door. You might hear it already, this is usually just a little critter here. Something small, like in this case wolf. There's three tin can chimes, which is 27 lead. Then we go straight outside again, and in one floor below, there is like a little door and you should be able to make to the fourth can chime and next to that is a power armor station for instant scrapping so next up side bravo this is the biggest one of the three with the simple addition of 12 led in the front like the front room before you enter the elevator and there's two tin cans and two led paint buckets so that's a total of 12 other than that all the bunkers in terms of layout they're exactly the same and I, I think you get about 95 lead in total if you do it completely that is without killing the robots who sometimes also drop it and what often players do is like they do the gym area which is fine which is extremely good there's most of the lead can be found in the gym but in the storage room on the opposite of the room there is also a, I would say, 15 to 20 lead that you can use to get. So here, these are two red poisons. And then in the kitchen area, there are another few cans. It's only two or three, but every bit counts, right? And next up is the Eastern Regional Penitentiary. And once you fast travel here, go straight to the left and just keep running, running, running until you see a hole in the wall to your right where there are two tin can chimes. And once you get those, there's a gym, little gym area with a lot of weights in the middle of the prison. And that's where the bulk of the lead comes from in this location. 
So just clear out the cards. This isn't the best location if you are just starting out with your higher level should be easy. And then once you come to the court area you can see all these wonderful weights laying on the ground. Once you got those in the shit there is actually I would say about 20 lit so if you need it you can always go there. There are also a bunch of workbenches here so you should have easy access to scrap it and when you come to this shack here there should be a paint can in there which is another five lit after that you go straight back to the courtyard and into the middle door that goes inside the middle door is the most important one in the inside once you go get in go left at the bottom floor and you should see another tin can chimes hanging around pick those up look straight to your right there's another two and then if you follow the corridor the hallway and then go straight to the left you have another tree which in total is 54 lead which is quite a lot for running simply running through in like 30 seconds next up is fraternity row there's actually not that much lead here just 10 uh, I think at most, but I generally come here be for the uh, good music and the beats. The whole Nuka Shine quest was amazing, so I come here if I go for the vault Tech University gym. So that's 10 lead in total. Next up, vault Tech University. This one is a little bit special because there's basically two gyms. Once you get to the front door, and then you should immediately head to your right. And then the last room on the left is the gym area with another bunch of weights. Then once you get all of those, the other gym is in the uh, Vault University Training Centrum that is also there. You can get there without having to do the quest line, but you will have to require hacking a Terminal 1 if I'm not mistaken. But if you did the quest line, this one should be open. And that's a total of uh, 62 lead that you can find at Vault Tech University, because the other 10 was from Fraternity Row. Now generally I try to skip this location unless if I know uh, unless I know I can carry it and fast travel out of here so I don't have use cap. Next up is the Green Country Lodge and this is probably the most favorite one for the low level players as this is literally where you start questing out. I don't know if they pick it up, they might only pick up like one dumbbell or something. It is a nice amount of lead if you have access to private servers, this is probably the easiest way to get this one. The little gym area is one thing but straightly above the gym area is a lead paint can the blue one next to the settler guy trying to have a chat with you the further out we... so next up we have orwell orchards and this is another i think it's the first quest in the brotherhood quest line where you encounter this location so it's not really a spoiler you just straight beeline go for the house and once you get in the house go down the stairs in the basement and then you enter solo in my case at least i mean you can enter with teammate but and to the left once you enter there should be a little gym it's not a lot it's the uh, same as with vault -Tech university if you can carry it and fast travel out of it it's worth it otherwise there is a workbench once you go outside goes out through the front door again and then to your left the check most to your left has a armor workbench where you can scrap your items as shown here next up is the kanawa county cemetery and i hope i pronounce that correctly but i'm not entirely sure and this one is a little bit of a trick and uh, not necessarily a tricky one you just have to know what to look for and where to go 
and there are quite a few cultists here but again nothing a high level player should handle the key to this little grave is located somewhere in the main church and you have to come here first before you can unlock it now there's not much in it so if you rather skip it you're not really missing out on a lot it's maybe just a few scrap but th this shack over here has quite a few paint can and if you were looking for some concrete if you want to build out the nice little camp this has a lot of concrete on the ground ready and waiting outside there are also quite a few paint cans and of course a bag of fertilizers or for acid always handy if you want to make some bullets which i assume you do now in this case i was wondering where the hell are all those cultists laying around and i didn't really check it properly and there was a mod man so i got jumped and i forgot my pip boy light was on yay as even you know a veteran hoarder like myself makes some mistakes we can quickly rectify that failure and just go in the big items or the red poison the amount of red poison that you find in the church And that's one, and then on this little bench thingy, there's two. And then when you go upstairs, straight from the opposite side of where you uh, enter the upper room, there is a desk, and on that desk is another uh, pack of red poison, and that's the key one. The cult is so annoying, but nothing too handy to deal with and if you picked up everything you should end up around 54 lead so next up is Camden Park and this is of course where I come for my daily Mr. Fuzzy tokens because I love them and you go to the big roller coaster in the middle and if you follow the path you can pick up the uh, paper uh, drink holders cups they're called and once you go through the little tunnel then just go straight to the right and then again to the right and you should be able to avoid the traps i hope and then there is some more can chimes there and if you loot this whole inner area there's also uh, two workbenches here at least and there's also a possible bobblehead spawn uh, so if you need a crafting workbench here it is and should uh, yield you 54 lead plus whatever you picked up inside. Next up is the Charleston Fire Department. And this is probably the most popular spot to get your gym weights. The entire server always comes here. So it isn't always ideal to go check it out because oft more often than not it is looted. But if you take, if you manage to get the whole you end up with a bunch, but I mean a bunch of lead. Uh, and sometimes they are a little bit hard to see because apparently I missed here. As you can see in the footage, I missed top and missed three weights, which includes a total of 12 lead that I missed. Uh, the hoarder in me is very sad about watching this footage. It does a lot of pain. But there's another paint can and here of course are the workbenches. There's a few bits and bobs here but nothing too crazy. So yeah, on to the next one. If you're in the neighborhood or need some quick armor station you can always march down to Welch station and there are one can chimes for a 9 lead. Boom. Next up is the Sludge Works. This is one of the places where you have to go in Becker's quest line. But there is also a little gym area, I guess you could call it that, which is very sneaky. And basically what you do is you jump over, jump in around this location a little bit further to the left if you want to be absolutely certain and be in the clear next to the gym. But you could theoretically just hop over the wall, take the gyms, instantly use a crafting workbench and you should be fine for another 50 for lead I think. There is also three fusion cores in this location should you need those. Next up is the Hornwright testing site number 3. 
it's all the way down in the bottom of the ash heap but here we look for the ore generally there's way more iron ore here than there is lead ore there's about 188 some of them ores are extremely bugged uh, like annoying to pick up so you have to keep that in mind but in general if you do it properly you can look uh, to walk away around 188 iron ore and about 112 lead ore and in that lead ore you will basically find all of them next to the red crane that is shown in footage it's not that hard to find and once you get used to it you should be able to always find your way back once you got those we continue a little bit get all the ores and then we're good to go for the next one Next up is the Hornwright Estate and you will need the Hornwright Estate access key card which is located in their industrial headquarters which is somewhere around Charleston. So you really need that key card otherwise you can't access the top floor. But once you do go up the elevator up the stairs to the right and then the last door on the left and there's a little gym area. Now this one has quite a lot of weights and the workbench here is locked behind a level 2 lockpick but there's a way to cheat the system in good old-fashioned Bethesda ways and if you don't have a jetpack but have the serum that allows you to jump higher you stand on the ledge here and then you just jump forward and then here you are naturally if you have jetpack it's way easier but that will cut down on quite a time Next up is Side Charlie. You probably already know how this one works, but I will show you how to get the entrance. There isn't any specific thing that I found. Basically, you just jump in and you go through the elevator. And in this case, because that's simple repeating, but in the end, if you do it correctly or at least correctly enough, you end up with around 92 lit that I got in this case. Next up is the monorail elevator, which is located just north about the Lucky Hole Mine. And this one is very good, very easy, very fun. I mean, I don't know if it's fun grinding away resources, but you just go straight to the left. First pillar you see, and there's a little elevator. Just go up in that elevator. And once you're up there, go to the train part and then you should see it on the laying on the floor now i have no clue what those amount of weights are doing up here nor why there's so much bags of cement but if you need a lot of cement this is also a great place to go and should you have too much carry weight and still want to go to the lucky hole mine you can just jump off and walk to the mine and in total this will give you around 75 lead Next up is the big one, it's the Lucky Hole Mine. This is where the real men get their lead. This is where you get the most bang for your buck. This is where you have an insane amount. This might be a long one and if you already know location, obviously feel free to skip ahead. Timestamps are here. The Lucky Hole Mine is kind of a maze, so I will try to show exactly where the ores are. They are sometimes hidden away. And one thing you have to keep in mind is that the lead ores that you find here and the crystal ore that you find here have the exact same color and outlook. Now if you're here and you need crystal or you have a scrap box this is very easy and you can just pick them both up so the blue door is the escape route you will need the key for that but we will find it there's a lot of cultists in here it's kind of hard to explain the exact layout but once you get the gist of it and if you watch exactly where the iron ores ah i don't know if you watch where the lead ores are you will know where to find them. Once you get used to this location it will become easier and easier and easier to get them all of course and the first time I didn't have them all. If I collect them all I found that that results in about 404 
lead ore in total, which is quite a mine of lead. It's probably the easiest one in the whole list here to get lead from. That amounts to, I would say, 1200 to 1500 lead scrap in total if you smelt all the ore stand, which is not a bad deal. So it's kind of a maze. I'm gonna skip through here a little bit. Look in the minecart because sometimes they are hiding in there. Feel free, by the way, to skip through some of the sections if you don't want to watch everything, every single location of every single frame. Now, what is important is exactly where you get the workbench in case you want to pick up all the weapons while you're here. I tend to do that, pick up everything and then scrap it all at the workbench. Since I have to be disactively looting in this place, I might as well do it all. So, in good old game design, they tried to hit it in corners, they had to hide it. They tried to hide it in plain sight, they tried to put it in places where people might overlook it easily. And there isn't a set path that you should take, there isn't a set way to go about clearing this place. I just tried to end up at the work chemistry workbench. Now in the main hall, or the main place, there's a lot of uh, cultists. So you have to take care of those. And in this main hall you will also find the lucky hole key which you need for the door opening to make it easier. And you will find it into the main uh, altar I think it's called. I don't know exactly but as shown on screen. There's a few veins in the middle of the room. Nothing too crazy. If you want to find the locked door, you can just go straight from the stairs to the left. Keep going and it should be on the left. If you want the key code, it will be on the screen. The key code is nice, but it isn't the most useful. I don't really find anything of value in there, but in case you want to know, now you know. A hidden area, you do the same, you start on the stair, go straight to the left, but you face the wall to your right. You basically walk into the wall to your right until you automatically find the entrance. It's quite hidden and it's quite easy to miss, so if you just go to the stairs, go to the left, stick to the right wall, you should find it almost immediately. And there is quite a lot of lead in here, so it should be easy. And there is sometimes a cultist hidden in the hidden area. And then we just pop him. 
And then of course here is the chemistry workbench. Next up is site alpha. This is the same one as before, so I'm not really gonna show you except the entrance so you know where to go. But exact same layout, exact same problem. So you should count another 90 plus lead from this one. Next up is a surprising one. It is the Pleasant Valley Ski Tops or whatever it's called. It's basically at the top of the world. There is actually quite a surprising amount of lead here I found uh, and that is without buying. So one, the first one is of course these three can chimes on top. Other than that, you just keep running straight after you collected those and you go all the way in the back and you see another tree hanging in the front. So that's already a 54 lead just by doing this. Now inside, so there's a red poison straight to the right when you enter the building and then we can go upstairs. And there is a paint can and that's another five leads so we're getting pretty good. Now there is a vendor here and there are where you can buy uh, lead in bulk and steel. I'm assuming you use lead for bullets so the steel might come in handy too. There's two tin cans there. After that, turn around and go to the right where that you will see an employee's office for the extra two pencil. When I said earlier that I'm a class A hoarder, that I actually meant it. I want to go for the most bang for the buck. Now, it isn't the most efficient, so you don't have to do it. It's whatever. If you don't want to pick up the two extra lead, you don't want to. And that's perfectly fine. If you rather buy it, that's also perfectly fine. I'm just here to show you every little nook and cranny. Now we go to the other building, I think it's the cabins, it's called on the map, and there are some more can chimes here. So that's a total of 9 can chimes, which is quite a lot, I think about 63 lead in total. And everything from here, if you want to be desperate like me, and you want some more 8 lead, you can get it. You can also find a beer head in the room left of this. In case you want to get fancy but other than that there are two vendors here the one in the pleasant valley resort and the other one at the pleasant valley train station where you can basically buy uh, five bulk lead in total if you sell bullets it's worth it if you don't use a lot of bullets and need a little little bit of lead it's worth it. It's also more efficient than going around trying to find tin cans like me. The White Spring Golf Club is very popular so you won't always find but as soon as you spawn, you take the door on your left and you should see four can chimes hanging around which gives you a total of 36 lead. And then we have the last one, which is the Ella Ames Bunker. During the Free States questline, you will go there. And there's a workbench all the way in the beginning, so that makes it very easy if you need one. Uh, and there's another chemistry workbench in the laboratorium. Other than that, the lead here will come from tin cans, paint buckets, red poison, the whole junk pile. This location isn't the most efficient as you need a variety of resources which this would be an excellent choice. The big room is the storage room or whatever it's called there's where you find most of the tin cans and the paint buckets. Next to that is the laboratorium where you find the other workbench and some more lead in pencils. This should net you about 40 let a little bit more perhaps if you pick up everything but as you saw already you have to pick up every single item these are all my let farm locations so if you grind out these locations you should be hella rich in terms of let when you turn your ores into normal let scrap on a workbench Make sure to do each individual ore one by one instead of all of them at once. The reason for this is consistency. If you have the super duper perk in the luck tree, you have a 30% chance whenever you craft something. It is literally means whenever you craft something. So if you do the whole batch, you only have 30% chance of it. If you do them one by one, each time you do one, 
you get 30% chance. So that's why you see me spamming one, craft one for the consistency. So that's about everything that needs to be said on that front. I really hope this will help you out and get you lots and lots of bullets and those that you do not want to sell them out because the easiest way to make money in this game or at least a big heap of money in this game is of course to sell bullets. So my name is Welsko, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learned and I will see you in the next one.